This is our home, the Japanese archipelago. There are more tectonic plate boundaries here than anywhere on Earth. It is one of the world's most seismologically active areas. Unfortunately, today we are still unable to predict when earthquakes will occur. In March 2011, the Great East Japan earthquake struck. The massive earthquake and tsunami wreaked terrible damage and killed about 16,000 people. Scientists later stated that nobody had expected an earthquake of this scale. In order to minimize damage from massive earthquakes, a wide range of groundbreaking research on disaster prevention and damage mitigation is being done. For effective disaster mitigation, we should make sure that we're not caught unaware. To do so, we created a simulation of a whole city and rose to a challenge previously thought impossible. This is the world's first simulation to examine the effects of a devastating earthquake shaking a city of more than a million people. Using complex architectural and detailed ground configuration data, a far-reaching simulation was conducted. The key to this simulation was the K computer. Thanks to the K's computing power, a complex simulation could be crafted. As a result, the effects of shaking on the city could be observed and important clues to disaster prevention and mitigation revealed. This is the Tokyo Metropolitan Area Hazard Map. The metro area has been divided into 5,133 sections and ranked by building damage risk in the event of an earthquake. Buildings in sections with darker color have a higher risk of collapse. Yet this map was created from data gathered from previous earthquakes and therefore it can only predict damage from known earthquakes of the past. To consider what would happen when an earthquake of an unprecedented scale strikes, we had to rely on simulations. But simulations have limits. This is a simulation made for conventional seismic building design. Typically, we build models one by one and then calculate how the buildings respond to the earthquake to check their resilience. However, it was impossible to perform a massive number of models for a large-scale urban city with the system. To calculate the effects of devastating earthquakes, a large amount of data, including the strength and construction of individual buildings, is needed. To simulate the shaking of the entire metropolis of Tokyo, a huge amount of computing power is required. How would a powerful earthquake affect the massive Tokyo metropolis? Until now, the effects could only be imagined. Now we no longer have to rely on our imagination. The central part of Tokyo, an area 10 kilometers by 10 kilometers, is shaken in the simulation. It is a dense megalopolis of more than 1 million people. 3D models for more than 250,000 structures have been created automatically. The model is not limited to above ground. It can predict the effects of seismic waves with amplitudes extending from tens of meters underground to the surface. To create this unprecedented simulation, Professor Muneo Hori used the K computer. In terms of simulation research, we usually act like truck drivers. K, on the other hand, is like an F1 race car, so we were extremely nervous at the idea of using K for the simulation. We took advantage of K's computational power and were surprised at how we could calculate minute aspects, including the earthquake shaking the ground and the shaking of buildings. Using all of K's computing power, 
The simulation was conducted in just half a day. As stipulated by the Central Disaster Prevention Council, they simulated a shallow magnitude 7 earthquake centered under Tokyo. Intense ground motion corresponding to an intensity of 7 on the Japanese seismic scale strikes the urban center. The tremors grow further and buildings are shaking vigorously. The shaking of buildings is shown in color. Darker red indicates increased deformation caused by the tremors. When the earthquake stops, individual buildings show a variety of effects from the tremors. For example, two buildings in the same area and adjacent to each other may have shaken differently. Why are there such pronounced differences? This simulation attempted to determine how the bedrock below the city was distorted by the earthquake. The simulation confirmed what is already well known. When the vibration of the bedrock matches the vibration of the building, the swaying of the building increases. What we generally use in the simulations is information gathered from earthquakes that happened in the past to imagine what effects those earthquakes would have in our city. But by using the city model and K's computing power, we can visualize what might actually happen. This is a huge advance. The simulation on the K also attempts to forecast human response to earthquakes. On this screen, the behavior of more than a million people is shown. This simulation is created with the premise that we will observe our surrounding situation and take appropriate action at the time of the earthquake. Each one of these dots represents a person, just like you and me. Even when people remain calm as they move, there will be places where the flow is restricted. By gaining this kind of information before a real megaquake occurs, we can plan more effectively, such as where to place emergency exit signs, and so on. The results from the case simulation have been shared with local municipalities to aid in prevention and mitigation of future disasters. There are a number of reasons why we created a simulation for a devastating earthquake. In the past, it was always difficult to simulate so many different factors, and there was never a direct relationship between computational science and earthquake disaster prevention. But now, we can use a large-scale parallel computer like K and consider options that were previously impossible, leading to new disaster tactics. With this simulation, we will make scientific and trustworthy predictions thus leading to more rational disaster prevention and mitigation. I am hoping that this will help everyone to some measure. The K computer simulation complexity was unprecedented. Once a post-K computer is developed, with computing power far above that of K, it will then be possible to create more accurate simulations for all of Japan's metropolises, big and small. Furthermore, some things that have not yet been calculated on the K will be possible, including calculations on the reconstruction of damaged areas and economic recovery. With a post-K computer, there will be an even bigger push for disaster prevention and mitigation efforts to save people from the major tsunamis and earthquakes that are bound to occur.